All right, uh, welcome back. So there you go. That's how the dailies reflect what's going on. So as expected, you might as well just go ahead and take a look at any one of them, if you will. But here, right now, we'll delve in right into what we have for you today. Taraba politics. Uh, so we've got um, retired Lieutenant Colonel Agbu Kefas. Uh, he joins us here. He is the governorship candidate for the People's Democratic Party in Taraba State. Good morning and thank you for coming on today. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Yeah, so um, if I, let's get your impression. How has did this scarcity of currency affect your campaign, your strategy in any way whatsoever? Uh, thank you very much. Um, well, just like um, every other person is complaining, that is how it's also affecting us. But we, we work through it, uh, manage what uh, is available, and then uh, try to forge ahead because uh, we've not seen any solution yet up to now. Oh, okay. We thought that I mean, politicians have their ways of you know, getting by, getting around some of this. And so you found the way, as you said. Well, uh, we, what we do is um, most time we just uh, uh, the little we have we just transfer to them, and that's all. But we can't see the cash. Oh, okay. We can't see cash. Yeah. So now to your campaign. Saturday was going to be a big weekend for you. Uh, haven't seen the way the presidential elections went. Came, lots of people expressed a lot of surprises. Can't blame them for that. But for this weekend. Are you good to go? Well, um, we are very good to go. If uh, the election had taken place last Saturday, we will still win. So the extension has given us a little uh, time to also uh, uh, cross the T's and then dot the I's. So we are good to go. What makes you so confident? Because the, the governor vie for his senatorial position and lost it. Isn't that the telltale sign of what might happen? Well, uh, no. Uh, Taraba still have been PDP uh, state or two. So um, I'm riding on that and with my personality and character, I think uh, I stand a better chance than anyone. I'm sorry, but if the governor couldn't ride on that, why do you think you successfully ride on it? Well, he won his uh, election as a governor. Uh, for the senator, it's a deep, different uh, game entirely. But we are talking about the whole state. And uh, him losing the senator seat is not uh, going to affect my governorship uh, election. Mm. Well, it is interesting. I know that all politics is local, and sometimes they, the, the deeper you dig, the more you understand perhaps the dynamics of that particular place. But, I mean, as my colleague, I know that the PDP won in Taraba State for the presidential elections, and perhaps that will certainly give you, uh, you know, boy, <laughs> boy, the courage that you have to say that PDP is a, or well, Taraba is a PDP state. But then, uh, you know, some people will say that it also depends heavily on the performance of the person before you, that if the person who was before you hasn't done very well, the chances are very high that the people might reject your party. And perhaps people are reading the fact that the governor was, um, you know, not elected for his senatorial seat as an indicator of how he's performed. I don't know who, what exactly has happened. And perhaps how that could affect the chances of whoever is coming on the platform of the PDP. Well, um, for his election, he can speak better on that. Mm -hmm. But um, looking at what we have on Saturday coming up, uh, we stand a better chance because um, uh, PDP has been doing a lot in Taraba. And you know, the issue of governance is a continuous process. We can't finish uh, governing the people within this period. And that's why it's a continuous process. So um, I've also looked at areas that he has not been able to maybe uh, do much. Uh, which I'm also riding on. So basically, um, areas that people maybe are complaining, uh, things are not done, uh, I'm looking at them, uh, assessing them, and then to make sure that uh, we meet up because governance is all about the people. 
In fairness, I know that he's also tried to focus a great deal on agriculture. I mean, yeah. we, we saw the Highland Tea from Taraba um, and also some uh, uh, greenhouse farming, you know, trying to produce uh, some interesting, uh, you know, produce from Taraba State. Um, how that is going in terms of it being able to access the markets will be another kettle of fish. Whether they have been able to sustain that um, is another kettle of fish. But I'm wondering, what other areas would you, what are the key areas that you would like to focus on should you be elected governor? Thank you very much. Uh, the, the first thing is to see how I can unite the people in Taraba and then to provide an enabling secure the environment for them to, to live. Unite the people? Yes, unite the so people. So there is some division now? Uh, well, uh, there is no community that you will see people fighting over one issue or the other. So, But when you come up as a, a person in leadership position and you are, being, you are doing justice to the people, you are being fair to the people, and you carry the people along, you make them to understand that uh, you are there for them, uh, some of these divisions, some of these issues will be very minimal. Um, I will leverage on that to make sure that uh, Taraba is very secured for the people and then uh, to attract investors. And that is when you will see the issue of uh, agriculture, which is Taraba has a very huge potential for that, will mm -hmm. come in. Then you bring in some foreign experts uh, like the Israelis and the rest of people that have succeeded in the area of agriculture, bring them in, they'll be very uh, uh, comfortable to, to, to do business in that kind of area. So these are areas that I'm going to look at. Then um, education, you know, our children need to be educated, we need to give them quality education. So what I'm trying to come up with to ensure that primary school, secondary school uh, will be free and compulsory for all. So now when you just mentioned unity, my mind just went to the fact that, yes, the Jukuns and the Thieves have always had quite a tiff, you know, before now. Uh, I don't know how, and it's age-long. It's age-long rivalry. I don't know what you're going to do about that. You can, you can talk about that. But I want to ask you whether you see the emergence of Senator Emmanuel Boacha, who was a member of your political party, as a threat to your being governor. Um, no. Not a threat to me at all. Um, uh, it's just like I told you, PDP has a structure on ground already, which I'm riding on. And uh, some of them uh, thought they could uh, get through their ambition in PDP, but unfortunately they couldn't. And that's why they went to other parties. Uh, PDP have looked through and uh, seen that I'm a preferred candidate, at least to be able to do uh, the justice and to do the job that is required at this moment in time, this perilous time we find ourselves in. Uh, so uh, I don't see any other candidate not to talk of Boucher as a threat for me. But the, the APC ran the PDP close. Uh, APC also made inroads for the senatorial ticket. So, uh, and then they've also said, because if you look at the votes they scored consistently now, for the previous elections, for the last election, isn't that a huge cause of concern for the party? Well, um, it's not a cause of concern, actually. You see, uh, politics is very dynamic. Uh, you look at some of those areas that uh, created uh, room for this kind of uh, uh, breakthrough for a PCO, whatever you can call it, and then you try to uh, work, strategize and work towards uh, ensuring that you you meet up with your own vote, especially in the governorship uh, so election. So, tell us, did the PDP um, twist the Labour Party to supporting them? Because they argue that right from the arguments in the courts, how the PDP seems to be making a case for the Labour Party person who supported you eventually, but Labour Party is speaking up saying, no, that cannot be the case. Now, they are accusing the PDP of being the one behind all of these manipulations? You know, everybody wants to accuse PDP for everything. For everything. Uh, PDP actually has no hand in that. Uh, Labour Party 
Uh, I think they, they just felt that uh, they're looking at personalities. They're looking at personalities. And uh, they, they, they've, they've seen that um, a candidate that they should be able to lean on, to be able to uh, mobilize themselves for. So that is why probably they take that decision. But um, for saying PDP uh, is the one behind it, well, it's, I think it's just an allegation. All right, last time we checked, uh, unemployment is about 31.5% in Taraba. That's a lot. What are you doing? What do you, what's your plan to create jobs for the youths in the state? Yeah, um, I'm going to create an opportunity, employment opportunity, jobs for the youth. Uh, how will I go about it? The, the first thing I'm going to do is to make sure um, you mobilize the youth. You kind of uh, carry out an attitudinal change, you know, for them to change their attitude towards uh, just going about asking, collecting. How? Yeah, by you mobilize them, you look for experts that are going to engage them, to talk to them, and then look at the areas that they are very good in, and then you try to spot their potentials, because some people might be good in farming, some people might be good in other areas, some people are educated, they don't have jobs, they finish their school, no job. So you look at areas that they can fit in, then you break them into those areas, look for experts, look for people that will be able to uh, link up with them, and then find a way to train them, empower them. Do you have probably a template, a target, a mindset in terms of how much of that chunk of that unemployment rate do you plan to immediately reduce and how soon? Yes, uh, within my 100 days in office, by the grace of God, I will be able to uh, mobilize the youth first and then look for uh, people that are very good, that can uh, assist in training them in the areas that uh, they, they, they will fit in. Then work towards uh, taking them off the street within the first two years. So that first 100 days, I'll use that to, to spot them, to get them to mobilize them, to get them together, and then breaking them into various areas of their potentials. All right, my colleagues in Lagos have got some questions for you. Go ahead, guys. Well, thank you, Chamberlain. Well, let, let me begin uh, by asking you, uh, Mr. Kefas, uh, are you, how concerned are you that uh, your governor today, whom you are hoping to take over from, bidded for the Taraba South Senatorial District, and um, he didn't win. How concerned are you about the fact that that could be a, a testament that the people have rejected him and the PDP in your state? I'm from that senatorial zone. And uh, I have the heart of the people. Uh, they've known me over time. They know what I can do. And um, the people are ready to mobilize, to come out to vote for me. So uh, him losing, I think, um, is a very different situation, even though we never expected that. But uh, we, we are looking at the situation closely uh, to ensure that such thing does not occur in the next election. Against the backdrop of some of the things that you said earlier, uh, that you know, because the PDP has done so well in the state, um, you were hoping to ride on the power of incumbency, so to speak. So, in that regard, seeing that it's the name of the PDP that people are going to see on the ballot and not your face or the face of any candidate, that's the background for that question. So, there are those who would wonder whether or not the PDP has not been completely rejected or significantly rejected in the state to the extent that the governor lost his own senatorial uh, bid? Well, aside uh, riding on the platform of the PDP, I've also gone out for campaigns to show my face to the people, to speak to the people, to say positive things to them, to assure them that uh, I'm going to give them a very good leadership. I'm going to uh, uh, do justice to them. I'm going to make sure life is better for them. And 
I'm somebody that the people have known at over time of my engagement with community. So they believe what I've told them, and I'm still talking to them. I'm still doing more consultations before uh, they did it. So I'm very sure that uh, it's not all about the party alone. My personality too, uh, uh, and character is also playing out in this situation. Hmm. Well, that leads me to the question, uh, the next question, which came from some of the things that you were saying re in response to some of the questions my colleagues in, right there with you were asking earlier. And that is, what are, kind of feedback have you gotten from the people so far? Now, most of the time, government officials or aspirants such as yourself would decide that this is what is best for my people or this is what I think is best for my people without being sure whether or not that's exactly what the people really want. So I'm wondering if you have any feedback from the people that, can, that tells you these are the things that I have noticed that the people want, these are the things that they have said to me, and consequently this is the basis upon which I'm going to do this and that. So what are the things that you are hearing from the people about governance getting to them or not getting to them? Actually, um, the, the people are expecting so much from the government, and uh, they are not getting uh, much from what they're expecting. So I've already picked that up and uh, trying to get uh, to ensure that the governance gets to the people, especially to the local government uh, executives because they are the one closer to the people at the grassroots. So uh, when we, by the grace of God, when we come in, we'll be able to make sure that uh, those areas, those feedback from the people, the things they are looking for, especially uh, Taraba is an agricultural state, and people, predominantly, uh, most of the people are farmers, and they want uh, to be assisted so that they can engage themselves in farming activities. So I've had all this, and then they, they are also uh, looking forward to a good security system where they will be safe in their own state. So, and uh, with my background, uh, I think uh, I'll do a lot in that area to ensure that uh, Tarawa is a secure place. So some of these things, we are putting them in place to ensure that uh, we'll be able to meet the, the demands of the people because governance is all about the people. So if you don't have that interaction, we're able to give back to them what they are looking for them. Uh, you are just running the government for yourself. So make sure that uh, we meet the, uh, the needs of the people. Mr. Kefaz, I'm, I'm concerned about your emergence as the candidate of the party in the state. Reports say that uh, you were imposed on the party in a most undemocratic way. And as a result, there are many who were also interested in that uh, position who are dissatisfied. I'm talking about uh, people like the former speaker, Professor Jerome Nyame, Dr. Ikaya Buba Joda, Mr. Ikenya. How have you reached out to these individuals to ensure that uh, they're on the same page with you and they will be working for your uh, emergence as governor in Saturday's election? Uh, thank you very much. Well, in the first place, I wasn't imposed on them. Uh, we had a credible, transparent uh, primary election, which I won. Um, since after the election, I reached out to them, but they decided to go to the court uh, to fight it through. They went to the uh, Federal High Court, Appeal Court, Supreme Court, and I won. But right now, as I'm talking to you, all of them, they are already preparing to to come on board. We are reaching out to them. I've spoken to some of them. And uh, we are in agreement because it is the same house. PDP is a family. We have a way we bring ourselves together. So I don't think we'll have that issue anymore because I'm coming uh, to make sure that uh, everybody's together. We need everybody to be able to move the state forward at this difficult time we find ourselves. Well, I'm still curious about how satisfied everyone is within your party because of the other concern also that your emergence as the candidate of the party in the state is also a disregard for the uh, what they call the standard zoning arrangement of the party. So how, 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 what assurance 
are you giving that indeed everyone is happy that you have emerged in spite of the fact that uh, you know your uh, candidacy is a breach of the zoning arrangement in your party well uh, i would want to dive into that issue because at this stage where we are now we are trying to uh, move forward but what i will tell you confidently is that all these issues have been resolved and uh, we are looking at uh, the lives of over 4 million people in Taraba. We are looking at uh, the security of the people. We are looking at uh, the feelings of the people. We are looking at what people are going through. And for me, I have no any other business than to make sure that uh, I play my part to make sure that the people have sense of belonging. So I've been talking to them, and those people you are talking about, they know me as a person. And I think they all have high regards for me as a person. Well, you know, it's politics. So, and uh, I've tried talking to them. Other leaders also spoke to them. And we are getting together. Before uh, Saturday, all of us will be on the same page. And we're going to uh, work together for the success of uh, the election. Mm. Um, the defeat of the incumbent, you know, in his senatorial ambition is also a sticking point. And some of the issues arising as a result of that is some of his policies, which include, you know, the um, outright sale of the Highland tea, the former state-owned Highland tea in the state. And then there are issues about, you know, uh, pensioners being owed in the state, just amongst other, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, factors that, uh, you know, members of the citizens of Taraba State are dissatisfied with him over. There's also the appointment of a certain traditional ruler from, uh, you know, a, a part of the state other than where uh, that traditional ruler should have come from. I would just like to know if you would reverse some of these policies just to assuage, you know, uh, the aggrieved should you become governor. Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, the, the primary purpose of governance is to make sure that uh, the people are treated the way they're supposed to be treated. Uh, some of these things that have been raised, uh, we'll make sure we look at it. Uh, where we'll be able to resolve, we'll resolve them. And uh, where we'll not be able to resolve, we'll try to still talk to them, appeal to them, dialogue and then see that uh, we'll find solution and uh, to reduce crisis. So um, I believe that by the time uh, you come in, by the grace of God, we'll be able to uh, do something on that. All right, so as we wind down now, could you tell us, because I do know that some time ago, I think sometime in 2021, salaries were not paid for seven months, They're really concerned, hoping that this is not going to be a thing if you win. Yes, you know, I remember I just came out from a military background. I uh, served in the civil service as a military officer for 21 years. So I've also been on salary for that period, and I'm still collecting my pension. So I know what it is to not to be paid salary. So I've assured the people that their salary will be paid, uh, their pension will be paid, and it's going to come regularly. So are you assuring the people that security would not be a challenge when yes, you come in there? definitely. I've done it before in the Niger Delta, where I served in Wari in Delta State. I was one of the people involved to ensure that the militants they have amnesty is there on record. Um, the Jukun Thief crisis, which you raised, when um, His Excellency Susan was governor of the next state, we, I, I had a, uh, a meeting with him and... Uh, we resolve that crisis. That's why you can't hear anything about Jukun and Thief anymore. Uh, the, there was a time we have a religious crisis in Wukari in Taraba State. I was the one that set up a 20-man committee, 10 Muslim youth, 10 Christian youth, bring them together, resolve the issue. So I think um, I'm very good in that, and I'm ready to make sure that uh, the people are safe, because that is the number one responsibility. All right, yeah. so they can hear you. Um, they'll hold anyone who wins who promises this kind of things in Taraba State. But we do thank you for coming on, the retired Lieutenant Colonel Agbu Kafas, the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Taraba. Thank you for coming on and all the best. Thank you very much. We will be back in a moment. Stay with us.